Hello, listener, and welcome to Tim Portlers, the show where we jump around a whole bunch of different games and systems, and hopefully we try to do so in a somewhat coherent manner. My name is Seth. I'm the writer and game master, and with me I have... My name is David, and you may be surprised to learn that I have hair. Shocking. And I am Rachel, and... I'm not sure, but David might win as far as length of hair. Yep. But I also have hair. The revelations keep coming. Kyle. Yes, I well, also well, have. Kyle. <laughs> yes, yes. I love I cue cue ball. <laughs> <laughs> The secret's out. I have, I have nothing up top. No, uh, I also have hair. It's on the dark. I think I might have the darkest hair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the tallest, but at least have the darkest. <laughs> but it's the least. My tallest. Well, no, I think Seth has the least amount of more lesser length yeah. hair than I do. Face in the front too. Oh, true. So yeah, I'm. Good. Yeah, all right. Don't just count the beard. Yeah. I'm queen shaven. Top oh, a baby's bottom. You know who else has hair? Our heroes. And when when last we left them, they <laughs> were, were in a predicament well, involving hair. Ish. It was a very uh, hairy predicament. Mm, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, they had been traveling through the vortex and made a nice new friend, uh, who was basically, you found out some sort of mega doctor and, uh, he tried to do some things. Apparently he was looking for the key to time and you decided not get out of our TARDIS. We tried to stick a chicken on him. Yeah. Chickens were unsuccessfully sick (laughs) and, uh, but you managed to banish him out, I don't know where, uh, somewhere in the vortex, which means literally anywhere in space and time. And... It could be like <clears throat> literally anywhere right now. Literally? And the TARDIS had a, had a bit of a bad day in that regard, as it kind of didn't respond very well to the shock wave that happened there. So it made an emergency landing, just sort of, uh, as I described it, looking somewhat like melted Tupperware. Uh, when you landed, you think back in England around 1980, and you decided you were gonna let the TARDIS try to repair itself while you guys went out for some milkshakes. So you found, uh, you know, a little soda parlor somewhere on the, the docks, you think, in London, maybe again, and you were hanging out there and having some heart to heart convos and making Rolda feel bad and yeah perhaps sharing some pertinent revelations about what may or may not have befallen one of your fathers and that is where we pick up as a figure in a coat has just approached you it looks somewhat neanderthalic simian in visage and has simply asked about, you know, is, is that your vessel over yonder? And Rolda, upon seeing this individual, has uh, declared that there may in fact be trouble because she appears to associate the presence of this type of creature with Daleks. So that is where we find ourselves now, out, uh, we'll say, like the, the typically gloomy, Londonium day, as uh, you have just encountered your new acquaintance, and he's looking about to each of you. You are all intelligent. About four fifths of us, yeah. He looks around and counts. <laughs> I have recently learned fractions. Where is the fifth? Next lesson jokes. Okay, humor shall be good. integrated into our education system which also would be new education is new for you we have had no need of instruction beyond our abilities to wage war for our masters so just to make sure though uh, are you making like new math then or can we keep the old math math is math 
Okay, good. So no more new math. Okay. But uh, yes, we are intelligent and you are? Ogron. Ogron. Well, pleasure to meet you. Uh, what can we do for you? Yeah, I'd build a pipe suddenly, like waves her head and I, that, that, that I believe is the species. He is an, an ogron. They oh. are utilized by the Daleks for their brutish abilities, no offense, and their lacking intellect makes them very malleable, no offense, to uh, be used as cannon fodder and be slaughtered by those who oppose the Daleks. Again, no offense. I suppose. Well, I want to apologize. It was very rude of me to think that was your name, dear sir. Merely have a designation. Oh. Which is... We've... And how do you hmm? spell his species? Oh, he is O-G-R-O-N. 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 Mm-hmm. Wait. O-G-R-O-N? O-G-R-O-N. O-G-R-O-N? Correct. I got the R and O mixed up. Dang it. Oregon. To my world. <laughs> I live in Oregon. He looks like an ape? Yeah, kind, kind of Neanderthal, apish. Kind of long, dark hair, beady eyes. He also has hair? He does. Whoa. Wow. It's the theme <laughs> of the evening. <laughs> Must. You, with your vessel, we wondered if perhaps you could transport us elsewhere that we may establish our new society, if that is what we determine we wish. How many of them, how many of you are there? I believe there were more, but much as my designation eludes me, we appear to have lost parts of ourselves in being transported here by unknown means. But I believe we were exposed to some sort of pathogen. Okay. Pathogen? Yes. It was intended for lethal effect, I believe, against our masters. But for us, it had an alternate side effect. Would you uh, care to describe what this alternate side effect was, just so we know... For sure. He reaches up and taps his head. The smarter thing. Oh. So it was lethal to your masters? Yes. Who were? The Daleks. Okay. And now you're smart? Yes. If it is not unhumble to say so. No, it's, I mean, it's totally if, fine. If logically you're smarter than you were, I don't think it's a bad thing to say it. That's a fact. Hmm. Builder just waves a hand again. Excuse me, sorry, don't want to interrupt. Very interesting, actually. But just to reiterate, your masters are all dead, yes? I believe so. So it's more like your kind wants to go get a lift to go somewhere to start your own civilization, not you and the, your masters. Failing well, that, you will have to set up our society here. And since the humans likely will not have us, that would mean further bloodshed. Right. Don't want that, probably. Uh, uh, there's a good chance we can be of some assistance, but you know our, our transport is... Uh, one of limited size and two kind of broken right now. Yeah. Is it not a Time Lord vessel? It's getting better, but yes, it, it's, it is a Time Lord vessel and it is not functional at the moment. I see. Very well. We shall mount our assault before they catch wind of our advance. Thank you. And he just walks up. Uh, actually, like, what's the timetable that you, I'm trying to run up in case he's moving, I guess he's moving away. Yeah, he'll stop when you address oh. him. Um, like, do we have like a timetable, like how much time before you need to necessarily do the attack or like, can we go check on the machine now? I imagine it is only a matter of time until one of us is spotted. Sorry, can you, can you uh, clarify something for me? What exactly are you attacking? 
oh, we will relieve this planet of its human race if we are to establish our society here. I don't you talk about that, that like it's no thing. That's a big deal. We will destroy them or they will destroy us. It's not necessarily true. I mean, people can learn to intelligent people. Intelligent people are pretty good at coexisting with one another. So if you want to join the ranks of the intelligent, uh, maybe hold off on the whole killing thing. You know, maybe, maybe we can come up with an alternate plan that doesn't involve as many people being dead. But we are not unknown to the humans. They will anticipate violence. I suppose there's something to be said for reputation, but, you know, you could always uh, not live up to it. Then they will be violent toward us. If only there were four random strangers who could serve as diplomats for you. Do you mean 80% strangers? Did I say that right? No. <laughs> can you, Seth, can you repeat that? I didn't hear. Said eighty percent strangers. Did I say that right? I you okay? Yeah, that your math is on par with mine today. Apparently, uh, yeah. So maybe we can go and serve as the negotiator, and maybe then not as many intelligent beings have to become dead. With whom would you negotiate? The humans are divided. Probably just the local ones. Well, we. Do you know Unit, technically? Unit would be a very good place to start when uh, dealing with non-human species. These are individuals we have encountered before, and we have attacked them before. Nymphis, you're really charming, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and out of curiosity, uh, I went to a party, so yes, I am rather charming. Uh, did you happen to meet units in like a warehouse? There was that time, yes. Oh, 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 okay. That makes a lot more sense now. Uh, yeah, I can, I mean, we actually met units uh, actually uh, about, uh, oh, give or take, 10-ish uh, years ago. Uh, back in, uh, let's see if my memory is serving me correctly. Oh, 1974. So yeah, about 10 years ago. Uh, so yeah, I can go wander over there, give them a quick chat, tell them that, hey, you know, the, your kind wants to just uh, go leave somewhere else. We're currently waiting for our transport to get up and running. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they can be a feasible to that. If you alert them to our presence, they will not attack. Uh, well, I mean, I don't even know where you guys are. So then, hey, it makes it even better for you. Well, I feel like as long as they know that you, you're not going to be just straight up attacking if you're at least trying to negotiate. I'm assuming they will give you the benefit. Very well. That's all right with you, of course. Oh, I'm you, sorry. Oh. We will hold off our attack until unit's attention is, intention is clear. Sounds very good. much appreciate that. That said, we are all intelligent now and appear to be acting with free agency. I do not know if my word, word will be final. That's I, fine. I understand the conundrum. And out of curiosity, how many of you are there that we would need to transport elsewhere? Did I miss that? There are many of us. Do you not have the number for how many of you there are? As I said, still adjusting. Okay, well, as, as you figure it it's, out, we kind of need to know that to make plans. So, let's go get a hold of unit. Yeah. Sounds good. Did we have a specific way to get a hold of unit before? Or did they just come to us because we were strange and weird? You dropped in their backyard. Okay. From what we know about UNIT, would we feel like we were in their backyard now? Not literally, but well, you're I in know. London. Okay. You think? Is there um, like a phone booth visible somewhere? 
Uh, sure, we'll roll for that. Um, awareness technology. And I'll call this, I'll call this easy because you have encountered a phone booth before. So it's not like you don't know what it looks like. <coughs> Seven. Well, that's a failure. Not a bad result, just a failure. You look around, you don't see a phone booth. We're going to need to go and uh, find a way to get a hold of these folks. Well, I mean, uh, is there, I look around, is there telephone poles and telephone wires? Go ahead and <laughs> make an awareness technology roll. I'll say that one is just normal. Because, yeah, knowing, knowing that telephone lines coincide with telephone poles, this is not your technology level. You guys are basically in the dark ages right now. You said it was intuition or? Awareness technology. Awareness technology. Got it. So that is for 15. Okay. There do appear to be telephone poles. You don't know if they lead to anything in the immediate vicinity, but they lead around. One of them appears to have a wire coming off of it back towards the soda parlor you were just in. Well, I mean, uh, if uh, I turn to my compatriots, if you guys want to wait right here, I could perhaps maybe figure out where unit might be. I might be a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll take either a local address or if you can just get a hold of them and tell them where we are, I'm sure they'll come pick us up. Okay, I mean, they might notice me once I start doing some things. Uh, I'll leave you, uh, Mr. Good Sir, with my compatriots here, uh, and I'm gonna start making my way over to a telephone pole. Just towards a pole? Uh, because that's the closest I can get to the wire and then try the, or at least find one that's kind of tucked away a little bit. So that way it's, nobody can see me. Okay. And then I'm gonna go change into my energy form and hop into the telephone line. Uh, you forgot about that, didn't you, David? I did forget about that. I was just like, <laughs> why isn't he just going and asking to use the phone? <laughs> because that would be the easy way. Yeah. Uh, Not the you, Memphis uh, way. Do you utilize your Varden physiology and just boom, zap upward into the, the phone line and you find yourself just assailed with all sorts of jibber jabber of whatever Londonites are talking about at this point in this day. Uh, you know, gossip of the school marms back and forth, what have you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what they would be right, yeah. Well, it's uh, the 80s, so. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, speaking yeah, of that. Like I swear, he's a, he's a stand-up man. <laughs> speaking of technology and wires and stuff, am I better now, by the way? Connection better. wires? Even though I'm with you in person, you know? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Um, sadly, I was never privy to whatever phone number, uh, whatever officer that... Hideyoshi was with called. I don't think Hideyoshi knew either. But, well, yeah, but we also didn't know what number he called. Um, am I able to decipher, since you mentioned I can pick up phones, calls, and stuff going back and forth, am I able to decipher kind of, oh, hey, this one seems likely to lead somewhere, kind of go through things, since mm -hmm. Memphis in this world is not actually technology, you know, He's actually technology savvy rather than uh, cyberpunk or whatever it was. Shadow World. I go for ingenuity knowledge to try to okay. parse through the data stream such as it is. Gotcha, gotcha. I am going to, let's see here, review what exactly. I want to go ahead and use one story point to give me two extra dice. How ironic. I rolled two fours and two threes. Um, so that comes up to be math. Math is hard, apparently. Um, 8, 11, 14. Yes, because that equals 7, 14. Okay, 14. Then you said ingenuity knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that comes up to be 20 total. Okay. Uh, it was, yeah, it was going to be tricky, so that is a success. No, wait, that's a good result. That's a good result. Uh, you do manage to 
just kind of, uh, you know, Superman uh, out listening in space, just kind of carefully, you know, do, doing the whole squinty eyebrows, twitch, 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 uh, as you sift through all the different voices and information. And you think uh, you actually recognize uh, one of the voices on the line. Oh, is it a uh, shoot? What's his face? What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Brigade or whatever it is, uh, Stuart or something like that. Yep. That's amazing. Brigadier. Say that again, please. Yep. The Brigade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Brigader. Uh, there. There we go. Mr. Brigader is uh, <laughs> singing the yes on the line. This is Greyhound One. We are still cleaning up a bit of the mess that was at the docks, but apparently there's been some sort of new anomaly. It would be dispatching a, a fresh team to investigate. Um, am I able, for lack of a better word, latch onto his phone call and actually kind of travel the telephone lines to actually go where? something Vardens can do, <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're sort of able to use his voice as a homing signal and uh, basically travel the, the current back along the wires, uh, above ground, underground, underwater, wherever it, you know, zooming through the, it's like first person camera zooms in, zooms in <laughs> uh, across London, uh, over to unit headquarters. Uh, you, you just want to pop out of his phone? What are you, what are you doing? Um, can I get an idea of using my surroundings to kind of figure out where in London am I? Oh, there's uh, prior news. Uh, it's uh, shoot, where it's not specifically in London, but it is or wherever it's at <laughs> in Buckinghamshire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Um. Well, let me review some things really quick. No. Yeah, that's true. The smart idea would be to go back and tell your compatriots, but Memphis is impulsive and incredibly curious. So he's going to go ahead and plop out next to the Brigadier. Okay. Uh, immediately, phone is dropped. Uh, you see a figure just shoot to his feet, like sidearm is being pulled and leveled over in your direction. What form do you take? I go take the same form that I had originally when I met him in 1974. All right. Uh, as you assume the form just uh, manifests in front of him, uh, you do not. He has the same form as well because he's a human, uh, but he looks a little wrinklier, a little grayer. But okay. as you pop up, he has the his pistol leveled in your direction. Hold on. Hi. I remember you. Yeah. Uh, sorry about popping in. Uh, if you want, you can finish that phone call. I believe I had said everything required, but I should probably make them aware that the uh, rather abrupt conclusion of our conference does not indicate danger. Oh, yeah, that might be good. So he returns to the phone, still kind of <laughs> keeping an eye on you because shapeshifters, who knows what you are. Right, right, right. Uh, but, who am yeah, I? Picks up the phone. Hello again, Greyhound One. Not currently in danger, I don't think, but I will keep the line open just in case. It just sets the phone down. Well then. Uh, do you want me to say my name for the record then, or? I would like you to tell me why you're here. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I'm here in regards to, uh, you were just mentioning about the cleanup over at the warehouse on the docks, and that yeah. something was there and that you're gonna send in a new team. That was us, sorry. Uh, we ran into some issues with our machine. It's sorting itself out. We went down into town for some milkshakes and whatnot. Um, I'm sure you remember the rest of my uh, compatriots. There's myself, uh, rather tall individual, pointy teeth, and then kind of a furry, or I forget if Sahim's furry in this version or not, but no, no uh, kind of an, elfy looking kind of person and then uh, uh, kind of a rather 
tall lady, likes to wear hoop skirts. I know it's been yes. a little bit. Yeah. Yes, I recall. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we popped in. We parked over there. Uh, we are actually talking with uh, some wonderful people uh, that are free from their Dalek masters. Uh, the Og- 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 Ogron? Is that how you say it? Ogrons, yes. Ogrons, yes. Um, and they were actually hoping to go uh, lead the system. Sadly, our ship, though, is in need of some waiting out period. to just, just kind of get itself back into order, and then we'll start taking them away, so that way you don't need to worry about fighting them at all anymore. It sounds like Daleks are already taken care of. Well done there, sir. I applaud you. Again, I apologize for the sudden uh, suddenness of our entrance, because, I mean, I'll be honest, it's sudden for us, too. We kind of just found ourselves dropped here. Uh, Sorry about that. Uh, is there anything else I can make help make clear the situation? I know I'm kind of babbling. Lots going on. I am unfamiliar with Time Traveler's Code. Is Milkshake code for oh. affecting repairs? No, no, no. Milkshake is actually... Sure, just go with it. Milkshake is, from what I understand, I sadly didn't have any. Um, but it's uh, what you get Earth, uh, people of Earth like to have you know, on your times off. Kind of like, you know... I'm aware of what a milkshake yeah. is. Yes. Okay. Yes, so it's not, it's not special terminology or anything like that. No, uh, I'm not too familiar with our machine. Uh, my lady in the hoop skirts, Rolda, is a little bit more knowledgeable than that. But she was right. mentioning that it needs some um, sitting out time. Should have known better than to expect a dull moment. It's not the doctor. It's one of you other fellows. Uh, sorry. Well then, these... Ogrons, have they disarmed themselves? Well, we just spoke with the one. And obviously, much as you are aware, you need to go talk to your you know, fellows and they need to go talk to their fellows and they're looking into disarming right now. But um, I will go ahead and if you want, I can go double check in with them and then come back here just to make sure that they are indeed in the process of doing that. I am afraid I cannot offer them the best of terms if in fact they are acting in good faith. We do not have facilities to retain an unknown number of aliens. And for obvious reasons, we are unable to integrate them into Earth society. That's understandable. They also would like to keep their species going because they just now got intelligence and they are now free of their masters. So they're looking actually to leave your place. So sounds like it's the best of both worlds. Uh, I know our machine's bigger on the inside apparently. So we could perhaps take a whole bunch of them and, you know, due to time travel things, it'll be quicker because, you know, we leave, then we come back. I'm sorry, what? Are you aware of what it is that has rendered them intelligent? Uh, Mentioned like a pathogen? I'm guessing... Possibly really. I'm sorry. Like I said, just got here recently. Uh, that is interesting. I'm guessing it was you guys that released the pathogen. <sighs> Not this time, but I am aware of what it is. Oh. And if it has had such an un- unforeseen effect on these ogrons, then well. Perhaps it is still not ideal, but perhaps I can offer them terms that would involve their voluntary status as test subjects. We would be able to examine them and perhaps determine what it was that has brought about this change of mind. I mean, I can bring that up to them if you want. Although it sounds like they want to start their own civilization somewhere else, so I don't know how agreeable they will be to that. If that is their intention, and if they do not truly intend harm against Earth, then I am agreeable to... We are not a space-faring people. We don't have vessels such as yours. But as far as we are able, perhaps that can be a working arrangement where we are able to study them while they make efforts to go elsewhere. All right, you want me to go? If you want, I can go bring those terms to them and then see what they say, and then I can come back. 
That is agreeable. A preliminary opening to negotiations. Um, all right. Do you want me to come back here once I hear back from them, or should I go somewhere else? I don't want to disturb you all the time. I'll stay on the phone. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bridget Eyre. Do you want to make sure he knows that... Uh... <laughs> Bridget Eyre. Brigadier, Bridget Eyre. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Keeping with our mispronunciation. Yep. We're on point. <laughs> He's, hmm. he's, he's, a, he's a certain type of uh, icebox. He's a frigid. <laughs> this model gets more energy. <laughs> what I was going to say is you want to make sure that he knows that you have, he has to talk so, so you can find him again? Well, no, I know exactly where he is. Okay. I would imagine, okay. correct, Seth? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, thank you very much, sir. And I'll go ahead and give a salute and then zoop, jump into the phone line. <laughs> you do hear, he appears to have picked the phone after you as you're, you're uh, just zapping your way back over towards your, the rest of your party. I do also want to thank you for bringing to my attention further holes in our security net. I don't know if I could reply back, but just like, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, just for the fun of it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do... Um, for the fun of it? When the yeah. DM says, for the fun of it. Oh, yeah. Do I'm do down. In ingenuity knowledge again to navigate your way back across the telephone lines. It's just going to be normal this time because you've done it before. You said ingenuity technology? Can I, I don't believe I did. I believe I said ingenuity knowledge. Oh, my mistake. Oh, well, they're both twos for me, so that's fine. Um, that is, comes off to be 11. Oh, well, that's a failure. <laughs> uh, so uh, you guys on the other end spend about an hour just kind of waiting around, and then it cuts back to Memphis and the telephone lines like pinballing around. All of England, <laughs> taking a wrong turn at Europe, coming back. Uh, oh, so this is Japan. Okay. <laughs> <Come back. laughs> yeah. Uh, as you guys are standing there, it's, it's clear that the Ogron is starting to get impatient. We're sorry. Um, he's not always the best at things. <laughs> he probably just saw like a squirrel or something. He'll be back eventually. And he'll be back with a shiny thing. You'll see. We cannot afford distractions. The longer we delay, the more likely it is that we will be wiped out before we can attempt to build something better. What do you think is going to wipe you out? That is how the universe operates. Yes, but it's over years and decades and, like, longer time periods than literal minutes or hours. Some of us are accustomed to things moving more quickly. Well, from what I've seen of Earth, things move pretty slow here, comparatively. Keep also in mind that your, your standard of annihilation is the Daleks. I get the impression they're pretty good at the whole annihilating thing. They're kind of their deal. Yes. Humans, I don't think anybody else is that efficient. Yeah, humans have been trying to kill each other for like a long time and they haven't succeeded yet. Well, that's an interesting argument. Uh, who wants to take points on talking them down? Uh, what are we talking? It'll be presence it's convince. Presence convince? Convince. convince? Yep, yep. Sorry, I'm not there, guys. Yeah, no. Um, if you have, I have two and one. I have one and one. Oh boy! Okay, Rolda, what? I mean, Rolda oh. has five and one. We're gonna let Rolda take this Rolda. one. Rolda. So you, you look over at her. Yes, You're five. rather convincing. I am. Yeah. All right. Can you convince this kind Ogron that um, humanity, the wheels of uh, humanity's to, like destruction of things, is a lot slower than the universe mm. at large? Mm. No, I don't want to. 
What are you doing? I'm trying to be convincing. You're not supposed to be convincing me. You're supposed to convince him of the thing I was talking about. Right. Sorry. <laughs> um, Mr. Ogren, I would just like to say that you are not in imminent danger. You have a great deal of time before violent humans approach. Their vessels and vehicles are very slow and their feet are, well, they get tired very easily. Somehow she has a good presence, I don't know. Okay. We'll let it go. Um, does she get? Oh, let's roll with it. See what happens. Yep, you guys are eight. Both of us, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, technically, it was going to be difficult, which is a twenty-one. She got a twenty-two. So. Yeah. Okay. So the the Ogran looks between all of you. They do get tired very easily. <laughs> it appears to be something of a design flaw. Okay, sir. Very well, we will wait a bit longer. You did appreciated. Which I I elbow Hideyoshi and I'm like, can you can you reach out? Can you do anything about this? Let me see. Then I <laughs> I'm gonna try and uh, psychically contact Memphis. I have the range of an entire city, but he's Maybe Just not within here. the city. We'll see if he's come back around. Go ahead and attempt it. Oh, All right. This is going to be uh, Ingenuity Resolve, which is actually pretty good for me. I knew I should have made it right at Albuquerque. <clears throat> 18. Where in the world is Memphis McDonald? <laughs> Memphis, you think you've banked back around and gone the right direction to get back towards England, and you even... Because of your time in Shadowrun, know where pro approximately London is along the shoreline. As you kind of coast back in that direction through the, the phone lines, you hear Hideyoshi say, Hey, Memphis, are you uh, on your way back yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my way back. Sorry. But uh, what's the ETA there? Um, well, well, actually, since, you know, you can hear me, why don't I just relay what I've found out to you, uh, if that's all right. I, I guess so, sure. Unless, you know, you want me to do the talking, but anyway, um, then I'll go ahead and kind of relay what the Brigadier, <laughs> Brigadier <laughs> gave to me. Change approved. I, I don't know if I know my ETA at all, so. Uh, well, conceivably, you can travel at the speed of light. So right. if you know the right way, it's not so hard. <laughs> Are you saying like, this is the way or do I need to go make a different route? Well, technically you're not talking with Hideyoshi over a phone line. Right, so right, you're right. you're just kind of bouncing all over the place trying to find your way. Okay. You'll get there eventually. Can I go find, like what, what I know that he would need that kind of direction? It would help. <clears throat> can I look for a phone? Well, you know there's no phone booth in the immediate vicinity, but given that a phone line goes into the soda parlor you're standing next to. I go into the soda parlor. Okay, you walk back inside. And, and I wander back and yeah. look for the phone and just pick it up and the, start. The city teenager just kind of waves over from the, the desk. Uh, you need to actually put coins in it, miss. I just start talking and I don't bother <laughs> listening to them. I'm just going to talk. You just kind of hear, dun, 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 the... The, the weird I don't. Terms. I don't know if this works, but I'm gonna just like, just start saying random things and see what happens. <laughs> the kid at the desk is just kind of peering across <laughs> over. At you. I act like I'm having a full-on conversation with somebody. Just looks over like, did he miss you putting actually in some coins and dialing a number? What is happening? I talk about. Uh, what the answer to life, the universe, and everything is, and how it's just mind blowing that it's 42. Crossing the stream, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mintus, you don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah. 
I kind of figured as much. <laughs> I, I don't have any coins on me to my knowledge, nope. so. Yep, we used it all getting milkshakes. Um, is there any quarters on the counter in like a tip jar? Oh, wow. Okay. Probably not because this is England and they don't right. do quarters. Well, I mean, then what the would equivalent. it, the equivalent, would there be change in a tip jar? Uh, Needless to say, I do give Hideyoshi all that I know, so he sure. at least is in the loop. Okay. Uh, we're here. Hmm. <laughs> Awareness knowledge, I guess, to, to try to pick up if you, if you see anything that looks familiar, like it's monies. Okay, so I... Been a bit. It's been a minute. Just um, trying to put buttons into the thing, you know. Why isn't it working? Two D six and add. Stuff. Correct. Twelve. That's what you needed. Uh, you look over, and there does appear to be some sort of tip jar over there on the counter. Unfortunately, because it's it's a yes, but uh, you look mm -hmm. over, and just just as your eyes find the jar, the kid as well looks over and is like, "Oh, sorry," and like reaches over to take the jar. I try and see if I can grab some coins out of the jar before he pulls it away. Oh, you guys, so mean to this kid. You're stealing from a poor kid. Um, okay, we'll call this... I try, I'll give him some life advice, it'll be fine. <laughs> right. Dr. Coordination Zinni Athletics. Says. Hmm? Coordination Athletics. Coordination Athletics, oh, perfect, okay. Yeah. Oh, good lord, I rolled three on the dice, um, 12. You rolled a 10. Uh, <laughs> You, you just kind of lunge over and start fumbling with the jar. It's like, let me teach you about life. Uh, was, I, I know was, we're not supposed to touch the tips that gets counted at the end of the day. And you're, you're wrestling with the jar for a bit, and it kind of fumbles out of both of your hands because it's, 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 it's a yes mm, button. Yes button. And <laughs> kind of crashes down behind the counter. But you managed to uh, have reached in and swiped. Uh, we'll I say, quick shove that in the phone and then like have the phone and help him clean it up. Uh, we'll, we'll say 20p for your phone call. I don't know how much a phone call costs in the 80s in Britain. Yeah, uh, fine. So Memphis, right. uh, uh, so, Why aren't you more prepared? I know, right? Shameful. Um, but as he looks down to the broken jar, he's just like, oh no, oh no, the boss will have me Ed. And yeah, it really starts just freaking out. Why would he have your head? Like, literally, you're going to lose your head if he finds out. I'll lose my job. You don't want this job anyways, right? <laughs> uh, oh, snap. I mean, there's so many, so many better things out there to do with your life, right? Okay, this is, this is going to be interesting because on the one hand, you're making a decent point, but on the other <laughs> hand, you did just sort of steal money so yeah mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. presence convince oh boy um so i can you know what i don't care <laughs> i'm just gonna see what happens oh good lord um that's actually really good apparently i roll well when i don't have good stats to back it up um 11 on the dice 14. You got a 13. Uh, <laughs> I'm winning at life! He's like nodding, yeah, I suppose, but, but how am I supposed to be making money? Well, what are you making money for? School. Okay, all right, all right. Can't argue with that, Sadie. I pick up a pile <laughs> from the tip jar, hand it to him. Well, this is, I can't, I can't. He's like shaking his head and shoving it back to you. I don't, he doesn't know what you like what he's doing apparently because he's shoving the money back at you even though it's not yours. <laughs> well, I mean, if the boss is going to have your head, which I still don't understand, wouldn't it be better to just take some tip money and get out of here? But <laughs> I'll I'll need to get another job to make 
money if I'm not making money here? Well, what do you want to do? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what would you be doing if you didn't have to be here? Always wanted to get into linguistics. What other <laughs> languages do you know? I studied a bit of French in school. That doesn't seem like enough to be doing linguistic stuff. No, you're right. It's a silly dream. <laughs> I'll never be a translator for the United Nations. I mean, I'm just saying you need to do more work before you can realize that dream. Go ahead and do another presence convince. Oh boy. Eleven? Nine. <laughs> oh yeah. I am so wise. Yeah, right. It, nothing in life worth having is not worth working for, or something Churchill said, right? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You can find another jar, put the tips back in there, and pretend this didn't happen, and see if you can keep your job. But what about my dream? You can also pursue your dream, but don't you need to make money while you're pursuing your dream? Yeah. But, yeah. You've given me a lot to think about, you know? I pat him on the shoulder. You keep thinking about that, okay, buddy? And oh, I, on this whole time, I have the phone <laughs> okay. like, out here. At this point, Memphis, you're able to you're able to figure out where Sahin is on the other end. Although I'm very confused because I'm only getting one side of the conversation, yeah. and I have no idea what's going on. No, no, no. I actually like it even better if I'm holding the phone here, and then when he talks, I <laughs> <laughs> so so Memphis is getting both sides of the conversation. Yes. I like um, that image for story flavor. <laughs> anyway, so hearing that, I want to make my way, but I'm going to go ahead. I don't know if I can tell where I am inside the phone line or not, but I'm going to try the pop out kind of where I originally hopped in. Okay. So not in the actual soda <laughs> fountain stream area because Memphis knows at least, hey, don't want to shock the locals. That's the reason why he went off into the alleyway in the first place. Okay. Uh, yeah, without, without, Difficulty at that point if you're able to parse out where Sahin is. Can I find him another jar? <laughs> where where I would don't, you find another jar? I would be looking at, in the soda park. Okay. Uh, go ahead and I guess do a, do an ingenuity or no nah, awareness. Uh, Awareness survival, if you're scrounging for things, I guess. Well. Okay, you are able to find another jar. It is not of equivalent size or even shade, the, the type of glass, but you find a jar. And I would all like to grab uh, some paper, either like, you know, I don't, I don't know if they have like a, paper for like a receipt at this point. I think so. Probably, I don't know, man. But like, find some sort of paper, make a nice little sign that says tips, put all of them, put the tips back in there and make it look like, you know, nothing happened to the tip jar. All right. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Uh, I guess writing a new thing and you can just use the, the tip sign from the old jar. Was there a sign on the old jar? Yeah. Well, I find that and I'm like, oh, never mind. Don't need to make a new one. Yeah. Paper was pretty rare and expensive in the 80s, so you should try and limit the, the reuse. No, well, I like to think maybe she found some paper and like tried a few different designs. And like, no, <laughs> scrap, scrap, scrap. And then oh, I'll just use the old one. Found the old one and was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you managed to carefully just slip that back onto the, the new jar, scoop the coins. Clean uh, up the glass. Yeah, 
he, he's, he's already got a, a broom at this point and sweeping up the glass. He's, Maybe I'll study in Switzerland, yeah. All right. Yeah, you keep dreaming, buddy, and I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank you. No, don't thank me. No. All right, you walk back outside. Mintus has made his way back to the group. Uh, as you walk back outside, you oh, realize... Oh, I'm glad to see you. Yeah, you, re you realize uh, this whole time Rose has had her face just like plastered up against the glass, hands over her eyes to, to make sure there's no glare, just watching this whole scene unfold. She just, as you, as you come back outside, just clasps her hand together. That was glorious. Thank you for letting us see that. What? What? Why? What? What? But the universe is made up of so many in incalculable little moments like that one and I feel like that was a good one. I feel like that'll come back and do something good. Okay. Did we just meet Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> My blow. Well, no, no, no. He was walking into, into a bakery shop. Yep. Yeah, so, but who is he? Also wasn't from this Earth. But. Yeah, he was. Oh. Remember, okay. he was from space eighteen eighty nine, yep. right? And in America. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The yeah. odds are slim. Is yeah, what very we're slim. Yeah, you never know. Anyway, I'm back. I guess. Yep. Now I want popcorn. <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, sorry for my delay there. Uh, Good sir, uh, I don't know if my compatriot here, I'm pushing towards Hideyoshi, has uh, filled you in on the details, but I, I did get to unit. I talked to a wonderful individual in charge. Uh, they had a offer for your species and your kind. Uh, I go ahead and relay the offer that the Brigadier gave me. You spoke to the Brigadier? <laughs> uh, yes. It was actually very nice. I, I did kind of drop in on his call, but yeah. We know him as an accomplished warrior. Well, he is indeed very accomplished, but uh, yes, uh, these are the offers that he had for you. <coughs> and I go relay that, uh, you know, as long as they're willing to, you know, do a ceasefire, not, you know, start any conflict, the, you know, I guess unit and, you know, everyone else is not going to start up the conflict. Um, and then the whole thing about the uh, unit's suggestion of like, hey, if you're willing to be, you know, have us kind of, you know, do some test subject things, all that while we're waiting, or you know, etc., etc. Fill in the blanks, exposition dump. So I don't need to repeat sure. everything for dear listener. So you can now make a presence convince roll, Memphis. All right, this is going to be tricky. And that's is there, the. Is there oh. a way that I can help with this? What do you do? Um, I suppose uh, not appropriately, and reaffirm that intelligent species like to negotiate. Mm. All right. So what does that give me? Hideo, she's basically assisting you, which gives you a plus two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds right. I don't now, work. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And out of curiosity, would my fast talking convince skill come into play here? Yeah, I'll say yeah. Okay. And since that's a specialization or whatever, that gives me a plus three or something, if I remember correctly. It's an uh, area of expertise. Yeah, area ex expertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I'm getting a plus five to what I roll right now. It sounds like from Hideyoshi, plus three from the exp area of expertise. Okay. I'm uh -huh. also going to go uh -huh. ahead and use three story points to get myself three dice. Even though I'm pretty sure I'll be just fine. You get four Before. extra dice if you use three points. Well, no. Uh, the first one counts as two, and then the next... All right. Oh, yeah, because I'm doing three. That's right. So, yes, we'll do the four. So, plus five, to whatever I roll, and all that. Okay. I'm going to do some math. Be right back. <laughs> when we get back to the TARDIS, I'm going to try and check in and see if this guy's dream happens in the future. Okay. <laughs> Curious now. Did I get his name? Mm -mm. Hmm. Turns out his name is Boris Johnson. Oh, boy. Wait, what? 
Uh, I think he's the current Prime Minister of the yep. UK. Yep, yep. A grand total of 32. Dollars? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. That, that, diplomacy. Is, that is beyond a fantastic result. Uh, so, it's over 9,000! Yeah. Uh, so your, your Ogron buddy nods. Fold, he has his arms folded, but he, he nods. That sounds agreeable, and this brigadier sounds as though he conducts himself with honor. Uh, yes, that is correct. We will await him here. He can send either an envoy or a come by himself, but as long as the tests are not too invasive, we will agree to these terms. Uh, I'll let him know. I'm just going to hop into the solar parlor, though, really quick, just to figure out where here is, and then I'll be right back, and I'll let him know. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And I'll go ahead and make my way inside to the soda parlor, not having no idea what happened previously. Yeah. But... No, you heard the conversation. Uh, oh, as, yeah. as you walk back in the, the soda parlor, the kid is behind the counter uh, being like, Bonjour, good day. And like practicing. Would I know French? Actually, weird point of fact, it just sounds like he's talking English back and forth to himself because the TARDIS is translating. So for you, it just all sounds like English. <laughs> Even would I be able to tell what he's doing, or whatever, just, whatever just, language they speak in the lunch? Uh, but yeah, you, you get you get the like. I get the idea of what he's doing. He's saying, "Hello, hello." <laughs> <laughs> His lips are moving differently, but the same sound is coming at you. Think right, probably... actually, no, it's it's established the TARDIS even has lip sync. Oh, weird! That's trippy. Yep. Does it allow another person to talk in a different language too? Like, you know, yeah, it, it, it. basically everybody speaks the language that they're speaking, but the person who's ah. hearing it hears what they understand. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily make me be able to talk French to him. Basically, it does, because if, if ah. you were talking to a native French speaker, whatever you're okay. saying would sound like French to them. Okay. Well, if that's the case, since seeing that he's practicing French, I'll go ahead and ask. Uh, Pardon me, Monsieur. Uh, do you happen to know where exactly we are located? Like what streets these are? Uh, he looks at you for a second. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we're at the corner of In Joke here and <laughs> Fan Service here, and the town being <laughs> the town of. We're still in London, I think, technically. Oh, we are? Okay, I forgot where we're at. So, all right, thank you very much. Keep practicing, and then I'll go ahead and walk out. I was, I was trying to think of an actual in-joke and uh, fan service reference, but I couldn't. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I'll go ahead and... Um, so you're at the corner of in-joke and fan service reference. In, in London. Yeah. All right, I'll walk out and uh, say uh, to our o Ogron. Is that yep. how you say it? All right. Uh, no, it's I, pronounced Ogiron. Ogiron? Ogiron. Um, right. but go ahead. Just go up to him and just say... You don't get sued by Frigidaire. <laughs> just say, I hope you don't get sued by Frigidaire. I, I, I'm sorry, Frigidaire. I apologize in advance. Those, I'm not the greatest at names. If you listen to previous episodes, you already know this. No, so. Kyle, this is not in advance. This is an apology afterwards. It's I'm Paul... I'm I know times a bit wibbly wobbly, but right, right. we're stuck in one one direction. I'm apologizing in caboose. <laughs> there we go. But yes, uh, I go at uh, uh, say to the ogron and they say, uh, "All right, now since I know exactly where here is, I'm going to go ahead and let the brigadier know, and I'll be right back." <clears throat> and then I go ahead and make my way back to the um, telephone line, make sure no one's looking, and then. Zoop. You dive in, you, 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 you've gone there and back again. I'm not going to make you roll for it again. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you managed to dive out the other end. The brigadier is <laughs> in his chair in his office and is, uh, appears to have actually just pulled out a book and be he's like he's reading his book. And as you pop back out, he jumps a bit. But, Sorry. Uh, well, you have returned. Uh, do you have a positive report? Uh, yes, they are willing to take you up on your terms as long as the... Uh... They were asking as long as uh, the 
what is it called? Tests, that's what I'm looking for. The tests aren't too invasive or anything of that matter, but they are willing to agree to your terms. They would like to either speak with yourself or a representative over at the, they are currently located in the corner of fan service and shoot, what was the other one? I had it and then I lost it. Uh, Inside joke. Yeah, in, in joke, yeah. In joke and fan service at that wonderful, lovely mm, little Yes, I know the place, place, of course, yeah. yes. It's known um, to all of us. Oh, that's good. Uh, but they would like to speak with either yourself, uh, I believe they said alone, right, or something like that? Either a representative or the brigadier. Right, yeah. But they would like to speak with either a representative or yourself, and they would like to agree to your terms. And uh, requesting that the test not be invasive is a reasonable request. And you would, of course, observe the rules of alien contact as approved by no one. Right. Like catches themselves and doesn't. You know, start spilling all the state secrets. Uh, very well, I will head out there shortly. All right, I'll let them know. Uh, anything else you want me to relay to them before your arrival? I believe any further negotiation should be conducted in person. All right, again, I apologize for the my sudden appearances on your end. Again, great to see you again. Sorry, we kind of come abruptly, but I'll let you get to your duties, sir. I go salute and then jump on in and pew. seems a little cut off guard that you actually saluted really. yes you're all dismissed oh thank you That's and then fine. I go ahead and make my way down the telephone lines I don't know if you want me to roll but nope I make sure I do this time to actually don't take the scenic route but head directly back no. you're, you're able to find your way uh, and as you do so um, Rilda during this Pretty long stretch of time, just starts uh, like like pulls a random piece of chalk out of her pocket and is just like drawing on the sidewalk and you know making little hopscotch boards for herself and uh, just in general is very bored, uh, but waits it out as she doesn't appear to want to just take off even after your little falling out earlier. But Memphis returns. The elk run has just been. Standing there patiently, you only get like the occasional passerby and nobody really has caused any alarm or anything. Uh, but Minfis, you return and yep. lay the update. Mm -hmm. Good. I will return to the others and we will await the Brigadier's arrival. Thank you very much. Glad I could help in this situation for your kind. Brigadier. <laughs> Yeah. You still hear the kid inside speaking French. And so yeah, the, the old grunt just walks off. He appears as though his business with you is concluded. Well, that was fun. Oh, is it over? That was a rather strange little adventure. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I got to see the world too. Sorry about my delay, by the way, Wilda and company. Uh, got a little way laid over in Paris, I think it was, and then over in Tokyo, and then over in the White House, then came back over here. You got lost. Well, if you want to put it bluntly, yeah, but, you know, I prefer to think of it as a learning experience. We're glad you learned your way back here. So, yeah. I guess now we keep waiting for the TARDIS to fix itself? Or, well, the, do you have to know how long that necessarily takes? I don't remember a whole lot. And, well, I obviously can't know for sure, but I'm reasonably certain that the TARDIS had never encountered quite this ailment before. Well, okay. maybe we should go back and check in on it. Yes, perhaps it self heals at the speed of plot. <laughs> okay, sure. That's don't know what you mean. Thing to say. I do say strange things all the time. It is a Stranger Things. <laughs> Welcome to the team. All right, as you guys start heading your way back to the warehouse. Oh, before, right? before, <laughs> before we leave, I uh, open the door of the sofa. What's your name, kid? Uh, 
Scott? Adams? Okay, thanks. Bye. And I leave. What was that about, Sahin? We'll see. I go saddle up to Hideyoshi. Do you think she likes him? Do I hear this? It's possible. Okay. They did have kind of a weird, I guess, then first date, as it were. Do, but do I hear this conversation? <laughs> I want to know if I hear uh, this conversation. Okay. Uh, do an awareness subterfuge to kind of sneakily listen in on what you're not meant to um, hear. Um, sneaking would not come in no. right here. Okay. Awareness. Yeah. Sixteen. Okay. Yeah, you're you're able to cover that. So I would mm-hmm. like to kind of just pop in the middle of that conversation and be like. Guys, no. Ew, no. Gross. Boys are oh. gross. Ow, that hurt. And that's it. <laughs> well, then what was it about then, Shaheen? Well, it, since you asked, it had to do with the fact that we figured, well, at least I figured you probably got lost. So since we couldn't find a phone booth, the next best thing was the phone in the place. So I went in and tried to use the phone, but then it needed quarters. And then there was the whole thing with the tip jar and I had to smooth it over. So we had to have a whole conversation about his hopes and dreams. And then things got weird and then we cleaned it up and you got back and I left. Things get weird. After you stole from the tip jar. I think that's kind of how things work. Yeah, I think, honestly, things are always weird, but it just got a little weirder. Like, feelings and stuff and dreams. It's weird. Here she is talking about weird feelings with the boy in a soda shop. Let's go back to the TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> As you keep pressing on, Wilda just kind of takes you aside. So he and just hisses in your ear. Is that true of boys gross? <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be no, only, it's not true. only sometimes. Only sometimes. Because I have found that to be true, but as a general rule, that that would change things. What things would it change? About whether or not I found boys not gross. Do you find boys not gross? When they're not being gross. Okay, fair. And if, if we're not, if we're a little further away from them, I was like, these boys, I know them. They're, they're weird. They're not necessarily gross, but they're also like family. So that makes it kind of gross, I guess. I certainly meant this. that makes sense. Girls are strange. <laughs> uh, they are, yeah. 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 Do you suppose I have family of people who are like family? Well, to be honest, I had to learn at a very early age that family is who you make it. But, you know. So, do you want maybe to. Well, if you. If we'll... Are you asking if you want to be my sister? If I want you to be my sister? If, if you want me to want to have been your sister, then I, I suppose, if that's what you mm-hmm. want. Well, as long as you understand the importance of my sister, Kizma. I, that, that is, I, I did want to address that, and I apologize, and I, I, I'm not trying to replace anyone. I... Okay, I can't stay mad at you when I hear oh. her hope. Oh, that's... That's really nice. I like that. Um, okay. And then I set, <laughs> set her back and... Pat her, pat her you, on. You try to set her back, but she's still holding on. Like, no. No. Okay. Um, hugs, hugs, hugs don't usually take this long. There's an acceptable time. Understood. I just... I'm still trying to walk. Yeah, she, she has this point. Waddling. Let's, let's go. She, let's, she lets go at this point. And <laughs> I, I, I just want to make sure that you understand it's not that I don't want you to find your sister. I, I just, I, I 
I, I more and more have this feeling that I, I was sad before when I remembered things and it seems like I'll have to remember more things in order to be useful enough to help you find your sister and that, that is um, scary to me. Well, living life is honestly kind of scary. I feel as though I probably lost things, which makes me worry that if I did have a family or people who would like it, that maybe they were what I had lost. Well, case in point, I'm looking for Kizma and I'm really hoping that she's not lost forever. So I'd like to believe that things that are lost can be found again. I can't promise because obviously I have no proof. It's just there's, I don't think there's any re-unknowing the things I'll learn. And if, yeah. I, if I don't like the life I had, and I like this one... Then you can choose to live this one. I hope so. But mostly I hope that none of you think poorly of me. It's not thinking poorly. I mean, honestly, when you move from acquaintances to be more friends or family, you're more apt to be annoying or to get frustrated with each other. That's just... Like her eyes go <laughs> wide. So that, that exchange with the milkshakes, that was just solidifying that we're family because we annoy each other. I mean, that's a one way to look at it. I see. Well, I imagine there's a cutoff, so I'll try not to overdo it. Now you're getting it. Ah. So I'm going to be honest with you. The only real, like, blood family I have is my sister. This is why I absolutely must find her. All right. Let's skip to it then. Which if no one else has anything, you are able to come back upon the TARDIS. As you do so, you, you enter the warehouse. Where I, I will link my arm with her and walk towards it. She has this big smile on her face. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have, to, you have to kind of put your arm up a little bit because she's so tall. So I'll but, do it for a little bit and yeah. then my arm will get kind of get a cake. So I'll be yeah. like... But as you enter the, the warehouse where the, the party had landed and last you saw was just kind of looking like melted plastic, uh, you enter this time and you see what looks to be a faintly melted, like, like it looks like it's somewhat slunk down and not fully uh, structurally sound. But it, at this point, looks like a giant tip jar. Um. What? Jeremy, got a makeover. Before. It, the chameleon circuit, it shouldn't have. It shouldn't have that? No, it's a very old model. So is this a different I go up to, one? I go up to the outside of the TARDIS, and I, like, knock on it. And I say, hello, are you okay in there? The, like, the, the top lid of it because there's actually a lid parked up top it just sort of <clears throat> yawns open oh so the door's up there now oh this could be a problem if it doesn't have a full chameleon circuitry involved it could just be trying to reshape itself and it's trying to take on a new uh image in the form of something relevant to our current situation do we want it to stay like this, or should we? Uh, I feel like we should fix it. Well, it's fixing itself. That's the problem: is that it's it's reforming itself, and that's okay, taking on. Okay, but how do, how do we tell it to fix itself in a different image? Oh, I'm not entirely sure. Can I hop up and look in the top? Well, Wait. hardcore, parkour. Well, can you I climb can make up. A okay. uh, coordination athletics roll. Okay. 
So it's basically like a two meter high tip jar at the moment. 18? Yeah, you're able to just kind of hoist yourself up over the, the lip and look down inside and you see the console room down below. A little, a little still kind of worse for wear. Can I talk to, can I, can I reach out to the TARDIS in my, my head? Mm -hmm. And be like, hey TARDIS, can, can we talk? Can we talk about this? Um, and I gesture. <laughs> There, there appears to be patient waiting. So, um, do you remember what you looked like before? You don't look like that now, and we really would like for you to look like you did. There's just sort of the, the sense and response of... And I send a mental image of what I remember. Okay. The, the, mental, the mental image response you're sort of getting in return is that that was the old identity, but now as it's rebuilding itself, it needs to take on a new one. Well, can you at least make it so the door is not on top so it's easier to get to? And I show a visual of what it is now and with an X through it and, and then try and show it. A, we need yeah. to be able to access. There, there's understanding, of course, you know, bipedal sentience would, of course, need the opening on the side. And just as you're, you're getting that sort of acknowledgement in your mind, you feel the entire TARDIS just sort of list over to the side. Oh, no! Can I jump off, please? Make another coordination athletics. Can I try to grab Sahim? Or, you know, catch her? Hold, hold mm. on. I'm trying to do math right now. Math is hard, okay? We interrupted this program for math. Yes. Um, this is England, so it's maths. Mm. 16. Correct. Maths. Quick maths. Uh, yeah, with the 16, you're able to tumble free as the TARDIS just like it doesn't bounce or anything. It just over onto its side. And then I stick my head in again and say, um, this might not work because the console room is not oriented properly anymore. Or is it? I look. It is not. The TARDIS also begins to roll. What are you doing? The, there's the, there seems to be the response of nothing, but physics have taken over at this point. It is round and it is on its side, so. Somebody um, want to find a stopper thing so it doesn't go rolling off? Well, we're in a building scene. It will eventually hit a wall. Yeah, but we don't want it to have picked up momentum and also then have to heal from whatever it does then. I'll go and uh, find a rock or something and try and slow it down and wedge it. Okay. Uh, do Although, in make case, a, uh, in oh. ingenuity... Survival, or, in, or, or survival or craft, your choice. Trying to craft a doorstop, basically. <laughs> 14. Okay, uh, it's, if, if uh, I, know, I know Rachel's seen it, but if either of you guys have seen The Gods Must Be Crazy where he's trying to stop his, tr his car rolling downhill with a rock, <laughs> it, it, it kind of bounces over it uh, the first time, Hideyoshi, but you manage to come, come back around with the rock and like yeet, shove it in place and it stops. So, uh, Rule, to, to back up a little bit, you said it's taking shape on mm -hmm. something that's uh, kind of you just experienced or something like that? Yes. Basically, it is sifting through our minds as it, well, at one point, I, I presume, was uh, connected with only my mind. But now that we are, my mind is fractured and we are all working together to try to uh, take, take the uh, vessel to our destination, I, I think it has sort of been picking up on all of our little idiosyncrasies and, well, the tip jar incident appeared to determine the, the new form that it is taking. It is still somewhat in flux, so if we have some other shape we wish for it to assume. Okay. But it has to be something that we just experienced or can it be something that we imagine it to be? Well, you know, actually, as she looks over to the TARDIS, you can see it slowly reforming into a bigger version of the rock that just stopped its progress. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'll take the rock as long as it has a door. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking about before. I mean, not to copy a previous design aesthetic, but, you know, might as well, you know, keep it going. Uh, 
I saw this wonderful show previously about, you know, actually the doctor and he had a telephone booth. And I think maybe if we get like the 1984 version telephone booth, maybe that would be easy because then it's got doors, you know, and all that. It's already a rectangle and it sits up. Perfect. Do you have one? Well, I don't personally have one. I pop outside. Are there any phone booths nearby? I mean, we can just go with the one that I imagined and then I go remember exactly the one that I saw on the screen of Doctor Who. As you bring up the... Trying to bring up the, the mental image and project it into the TARDIS, it doesn't seem to be taking it. It's still kind of shifting into a rock. <clears throat> um, I, would, I would add my mental energy to this. <laughs> Contact. <laughs> <laughs> I think I also will add my mental energy, but I suspect that I'm imagining it in black and white instead of blue. Well, technically, phone booths in the 80s, I think, would be red. But if we saw the old uh, Doctor Who episode... Well, which version oh, yeah, did we yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you're going off of that image. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure that I even saw this episode. I don't think you did. So I'm just, I'm imagining a phone well, booth, guys. I think I only saw a little bit of it because I left to go rent the apartment while Sahin and Hideyoshi were back there. So you guys at least saw more of it. Sounds like I was the only one who actually watched the show. Okay. Uh, so who wants to take point on an Ingenuity Resolve? I will take point on that one. Ingenuity resolve. Yep, yep. My that, ingenuity resolve is nine. Oh, uh, that's one better than mine. Six. Mine is only six, so. Mine's eight, so you can take it, David. Okay, right. so I'm getting, this is going to be difficult. Am I getting boosts from all three of my compatriots? Uh, Rold is not entirely sure what you're trying to envision, so. Uh, well, okay, before we do this, hold, hold up. I go outside. And I look for a phone booth. Well, Rilda, just oh. to make sure, since you're also part of this, do you want it to be looking like that, or do you have some idea of what you would like it to look like? Oh, I mostly care about function, not form. Okay. Really? And I motion towards the hoop skirt. Awareness. In terms of machinery, I must oh. look fashionable. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, awareness technology. Ten. Nope. Darn it. And that's spotting any phone booth. So then I try and explain it to her. Remember, you can, you can spend story points after the fact that you find I can? Yeah. Can I make it a success? Yeah, so that you can get it to the one spot. With one? Yep. Okay, yeah. I'll do that. All right. So I want uh, yeah. this to happen. You, you kind of pop out of the, the warehouse and you're looking around, you're not seeing, you're not seeing. And then, like, tiny speck in the distance, you manage to spot one. He's like, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a long ways off. Uh, do we have anything for looking at things at far distances? <laughs> Anybody? I pointed out, and I'm like, I think that that's. You might be I'm... able to find something like that in the TARDIS. I go I mean... see if I can poke around in the TARDIS. Okay. Uh, <laughs> at this point, it's kind of more rock formed. The opening was over on its side. Uh, are, are we? really going to look for this instead of just going for it? Eh, let's just go for it. Okay. I look at I look at what's going on with the TARDIS and I'm like, I don't want to mess with that right now. As as right. you as you're looking out and you're like, ooh, that's what I'm looking for, Rilda kind of pokes her head out. Oh, it's very small. Are you sure? No, no, it's bigger. Think bigger, but that. Oh dimensionally transcendental. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So and... I'm gonna spend a story point. And I'm getting a plus six from my three friends who are also imagining something vaguely shaped like a yep. belief box. Yep, yep, yep. 29. Okay. Uh, you have achieved kind of be a good result. So uh, as all of you do the, the five doctors contact, uh, link, link your minds together and try to form the image of your new vessel, uh, you get kind of this umber shaded, like gray, uh, faint, faintly purplish. It's, it's like a, it's like a very dark, almost black, almost black and white out, whited out uh, 
purplish color because the phone booth that Sadim was pointing at was red. Memphis was thinking of a blue one. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very oh. dark purple is what you got here. Um, oh, that's a nice purple. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of forms more rounded in like a faintly translucent glass window panels along the side of it. Uh, so it looks something between an old police box and a more modern-ish, at least at this point, telephone booth. And uh, as you all open your eyes to take in what you have managed to form with your thoughts and your link with the TARDIS, uh, well, I guess you got, you got the result, Hideyoshi. You tell me, high or low? Hideyoshi, high. OK. As you all open your eyes, you just uh, take, a, take a moment and look where the, the TARDIS was, and then, oh, as you kind of look up, and it's about four meters tall now, as it's, it is a, a giant, dark purplish, weird amalgam police box that you have shaped your vessel into now. So four meters tall yeah. is how tall? That's about 15 feet. Oh. Okay. Oh, it is uh, functional. Well, it's easy to get in and out of now. Yeah. 14? I would have to. I would have to. That's okay. Yeah. Rough estimation yeah. is fine in my book right now. Okay, we. Does it look less melted? Uh, it doesn't look melted at all from what you're able to tell. But okay. as um, Rilda opens her eyes and looks at it, it's like, oh, did I make it big enough? I think so. I think so. Does that look? Does that look about right? I said that it should be bigger. Yeah. But I'm asking for functionality. Does that look? It would function well enough as long as we're not in a, any sort of confined space where it wouldn't fit. But that's the case for you. Know, you, you can always have a vessel that would be too big for whatever you plan to use it for. But I'm just going to go more in. One yeah, I'm just gonna be like, oh, yeah. okay. Hideyoshi, as you as you near it, you know that there is like a, a latch that you can reach for, but you have to kind of reach up for it because the the door is a very tall door. It's like a ten foot door, so you're just like, mm. I am. I'm a fairly tall person. You are. I reach, uh, stretch, and grab the the latch and open it up. And you swing it open. Uh, the inside is still looking a bit rough, but you do think that it has largely solidified in its state. And uh, the, the interior console room kind of has now, seem, seems to have taken on kind of that same dark purplish theme to it. The desktop theme has adjusted to match the exterior. Internally, I'm just, Memphis thinks, looking good, Jeremy. Uh, the TARDIS thinks back to you, called me Abergine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then you oh, get the impression you. that that was a joke. Oh, although that it is a really nice sounding like regal name there. But whatever you want Egg, to go with. Eggplants. So <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Only reason I knew it was purple was because I like purple. Oh, uh, purple is cool. But Rilda's is looking around in here, and it seems. Seems we've uh, given it some direction, at least, since, you know, a bit more than random images from our minds that it picks up. So hopefully this will uh, stick. Hopefully, yeah. Just to clarify, the first one was just your default design then, or is that what you envisioned it to be all the time? I don't know. I believe this, the basic cylinder is the factory settings. All right, no worries there. I was just curious. And I suppose someone would have probably had to reset this vessel to its original factory setting since it was rather aged and likely taken on different forms, even without a chameleon circuit. There are methods. Okay. Well, good job, TARDIS, and I kind of give it a light little tap on some console or another. Okay. And then, um, the inside seems stable enough. Do we want to wait it out in here until the, the TARDIS is ready to take off again? Or 
see more of the local sites. If we want to go see more of the local sites, we're going to need some local cash. Yeah, because we we barely got milkshakes. Barely. Well, Tardis, do you actually have some cash on hand? There's the the impression the response of technically yes. <laughs> okay, that's a start, Tardis. Um, where exactly might that uh, be? It has many rooms, and there are, are tech, like as far as mechanics wise, many pockets in the many rooms. Uh, but so we're looking for a pocket change. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see what you did there. Um, but as Mindris goes off to maybe try to find some local currency, uh, Rilda just looks over to you, so he and his. And really, the only downside to being slightly bigger is that you might get a bit more attention. And just as she's saying that, the entire TARDIS <laughs> rocks. And uh, a, like a sort of sickly wail starts to <laughs> through the TARDIS. Um, TARDIS, can we see what's going on? Uh, there's the display that's still uh, not in great condition. But, I'm going to try and peek out the door. All right, uh, you peek out the door, you find that as you are, are looking out into the warehouse, you find that you have lifted off of the ground at this point. What is lifting us, can I tell? There does not appear to be anything physical latched onto you. Weirdly, kind of like muffled by the warehouse walls, you do hear what sounds to be some kind of like horn? TARDIS, what's going on? The exact nature of what appears to be happening appears to be eluding the TARDIS at this point, but it's trying to bring up appropriate data. Rilda's hobbling over to the, the console as the, the deck is rocking and grabbing onto it and trying to you know pull levers, turn knobs, try to sift through the, the data on whatever screens. And she's going to roll for that. I would like to help her. Okay. Here, echoing from the calls hallways. It wasn't me. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> oh, uh, as Hideyoshi, you come up beside her. She like brings up uh, some some sort of readout, and you manage to um, deflect whatever in. Uh, non-specific data that's just kind of uh, coming up with, you know, irrelevant readings of the, the TARDIS. Um, but um, you see as Rilda does, like uh, the information coming up on the screen says uh, that you appear to be locked in some sort of tractor beam, a very high tech tractor beam. Right. Does it say the origin of the tractor beam? Like, even, you, even on a physical level, is it coming from the left, the right, the other side of the door? It is coming from offshore. This, this, is, uh, this is a warehouse that is, you know, right, right along the, the coast. And are, are we being tractor beamed through a building? It seems like that's what's happening. Oh, my. Lioness has come back. I look at Rolda and I'm like, hey, Kim, do you think we could travel uh, right now? I or? don't know that that would be very advisable. Okay. Uh, whatever has a lock on us appears to actually be more advanced than we are. And... Oh, boy. I... I think I recognize it. I, I'm not sure how, but I feel like this... This feels familiar as <clears throat> you feel yourselves, the, the TARDIS just shudders as you appear to be slammed into some sort of wall outside. And, oh. I, cl I quick close the door. You never run over and latch the door closed. Oh, yes, probably a good idea. And, uh, well, I think, yes, that, of course. I know what's happening. Okay, what's happening? I'm being hunted. You just figured this out? This Silly of me to forget, really, when you think about it. That's rather Silly important. Silly of you? Um, 
you lost like all your memories. Yes, well, we all have our quirks. Putting that aside, you know, forget the quirks. What is hunting you and why? It is a man? Is he like, are you a runaway bride or something? Oh, well, I hope not. I don't think so. Why is this man hunting you? Do you have any idea? Uh, he probably disagreed with something I said or did, but I can't recall things I said or did before I became this me. So, Tardis, have I said or done anything especially offensive to someone who might have a high-tech vessel? And uh, the Tardis just sort of brings up a single line of text on the screen before her. It's a Tardis. You're being hunted by a Time Lord. Is that in our favor or not? Well. I mean, do you remember anything from that episode? Of Doctor Who you watched? <laughs> no, but I'm also not the Doctor. So it could be okay for us if they just want her and the TARDIS and are willing to let us just go. Oh, well, that doesn't seem like something family does. What do you mean? If you're just wanting to let whatever happens to me happen. Oh, sorry, that was out of character. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Responding to Rachel. Meta game, got it. Okay. You you kind of said it lower in a lower register, so I was like, "Oh, that's idiotic." I'm really sorry about that. Okay. But no, uh, at this point, the, the the Tardis lurches as you feel like the the exterior rending of some sort of barrier that you are just yanked through. Uh, so um, if we stay in the Tardis. We deal with whatever is coming. If we leave the TARDIS, we don't have time travel or dimensional travel, and that seems real bad. So and I you don't. You can time travel, and you can time travel. Yeah, but time travel is not the same as dimensional travel, and this TARDIS once was in a separate dimension, and that's where my sister was left. And if I leave this, I will never find her again. And then I start to kind of. There, there, there. She, like, takes you and starts patting you in the back. Plus, if we jump out of the ship right now, we're over the water. I get my clothes wet. Yeah, mm-hmm, sure. That, that's the reason. So, this point, oh. very well, we run. At this point, Memphis <laughs> probably comes back, though, from his little escapade, since he actually left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I found some change. Um, <laughs> what's going on? But Hideyoshi, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to go look for Iron Will. He's our uh, prime defensive mechanism. Hold on to your chickens. I like it. But it's a good thing you found that money, Memphis. We might not need it because we are being tractor beamed by another Time Lord TARDIS. So we might not be here for long. But that money's probably still good for most of the future. So let's just hang out and keep going. Oh. All right. So then, but- off to our next destination. Weren't we supposed to go take the ogre somewhere? Oh, Ogron? No, well, I thought they were going. They were taking care of that. I feel as though they can take care enough, well enough for themselves. Yeah, but okay. Oh. But where where do you think we're going, Rolda? If we can get out of this tractor beam, if we can travel while it's still locked on, we'll go somewhere, and hopefully, it'll be the next point where I was before I was here. Do you remember where that is? You want to put it in? No. Oh. Do we not? That want... might be relevant. Let's go. All right. Uh, she starts. <laughs> I am going to right. help. All right. I'm going to help so hard. She actually just uh, is calling out, Tardis, bring up our foe on the display. And uh, the, oh the screen manages to, to flicker and bring you some sort of image. And you look out, and over the water is a familiar boat. Familiar Bessie? boat? It appears to be old Bessie. Hold on a second. We know that person. Hmm? Well, we know that ship. True. But, but is I mean, it a Rilda trap? Scurvy would be on board. Uh, Rilda, just to clarify, do you have to know anything about uh, Captain Scurvy or the Dire Rats at all? What? <laughs> okay, that answers my question. No worries. 
All right, so she is going to try to pilot the TARDIS while being tractored. So... So last chance to uh, belay that order. Are we or are we not traveling in the TARDIS? I actually want to try and communicate with the with old Bessie. I don't know what sort of communication devices are available to me. Well, it's like a radio see. or a Zoom call. There are like mm, no, the the TARDIS is still messed up. There are no communication devices online. If you have some other way to try I mean, to communicate, uh, I'm gonna pop open the door. I can jump over there probably. I'm gonna pop open the door. How close are we? Um, uh, we'll say at this point, you're about 50 feet away. You're being drawn in as okay. Rilda's already frantically can, starting to pull can levers. I, can I take a look, try, try and get a, a beat on who's actually on the ship, if there's any... Sure. Uh, yep. you, awareness... You said specifically trying to get a beat. I'll say awareness marksman, as you're, you're trying to, to look from a distance. Okay. Distance of 50 feet. 15. Okay. Without really any much difficulty, <clears throat> there, there is a figure that appears to be at the helm of this vessel, is working the controls, and mm -hmm. appears to be looking out, you know, over the, the wheel sort of mm -hmm. a thing. And you recognize it looks, looks vaguely like, like you remember Scarvy looking, but... Uh, you know, the, the persona looks entirely different. Like the bearing is shifted. Uh, you know, the, the hair is uh, more tamed. And, but, you know, this still looks like uh, an elderly Troy Baker. So okay. I point that out to uh, Hideyoshi. Wave at him. Yell at him. Ask him if he remembers us. He's probably mad that we didn't return the ship. How close are we now? Uh... uh just saying, I could jump over probably. You, you are you are just being drawn in. It's like like he's actually trying to pull you down to the deck of his boat. Uh, Memphis, do you want to like pop over there and see what's what? And uh, sure, I could give it a try. Can I hop, go electrically, go engage into the tractor beam? Can I hop that and just let it take me? I don't know how tractor beams work per se. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm. Hmm. Can I hop into the magnetic field of the Earth and go travel through that? Mm, it's going to be more difficult, but you can attempt it. And while you're being like, sure, I'll just pop right over. Rulda is, uh, you know, finalizing the, the commands for the ship to travel. Um, hey, Rulda? Mm. Can you pause on mm. Well, I would say... Make, hmm, yeah, I, I would say... Well, but the could, door is open. The door is open. I would say you could, you could make the attempt to talk her down. However, as you are saying that, you're, you're well within range for uh, Scarvy at this point to just yell out over across to you, Surrender your vessel in the name of Gallifrey. Oh, that's not him. That doesn't sound like him. Doesn't not sound yet. like the same man. Never mind. Go, go. Do the thing, Rolda. So I'm not going over then. It's up no. to you. What do you do? Um. Well. Oh no. Um. We're gonna be separated again. I mean, I don't want to necessarily split the party, Seth. But Memphis is curious and impulsive, unlucky, and all of that. So I don't know whether or not how much that's pulling him in that direction. I mean, there is a check that I can do where um, must to uh, try resisting being impulsive, I can make an in, uh, ingenuity resistance roll with a minus two modifier. There, there's still a, a line between impulsive true, true, and true. insane. Right, right. I'll say you can make the check. It'll be easy. Okay. I help him. Okay. How do you help him? I, I'm going to poke my head out the door and say... I don't need to worry. Sorry about Bessie. We'll give it, we'll give her back eventually, and then shut the door to indicate to to Memphis we're leaving now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about it. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah, Memphis. You're like, oh, this seems like a great idea. No, it doesn't. Hang on. And you, that's not scary. You know, duck back inside. Clunk. Shut the door. 
as uh, extreme. You're an imposter, Troy Baker. None, none of you have been helping Rilda, so she's making this. Uh, um, check on her I own. go back and I try and help her for the last uh, few seconds. All right. If we have a uh, chance to help her. She. Hey, yeah, boy. This is. This is a very difficult role. Can I? Can 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 we spend story points? Yeah, she's okay. She. Really... I would even happily spend some of mine. All right. Yeah, she's she's just gonna burn like having her story points because use them or use them or lose them. All right. Uh, I'll come down to this. Yeah, her ingenuity is not good. All right. But that is a very good roll. Okay. Whew. She needs a twenty-four. She got a twenty-seven with your help. Okay. Whew. Which I believe gets us to a good result. Oh, yes. So yeah, the, the, the TARDIS for a second just like shudders and it, it feels as though it might be torn apart by the fact that it is trying to lurch into the vortex, dematerialize at the same time as it is being tractored and held in place by, by a more powerful ship. Uh, but uh, Rilda manages to like it's it's like the the Doctor Who moment where everything is feeling like it's it's gonna shudder and crack and break apart, and she just reaches over to a point on the console and just boom, slams it with the side of her fist, and groan, the the console goes up and down one final time with a wheezing sound, as he and you manage to crank whatever lever you think would be helpful, mm -hmm. and the TARDIS slips away into the vortex, just shooting off through the swimming colors of time and space with your new eggplant colored mm -hmm. uh, phone booth of a uh, TARDIS. Aww. So you hurl it off through the vortex. Uh, Rilda just kind of slops, uh, slumps backward a few steps into a, a nearby seat. So that makes things a bit more exciting, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, ruled that. Would have been idea? real nice if you had had this revelation sooner. I agree. Any idea, Rilda, why exactly that guy might look like that in the ship like that? I imagine that's what the ship, that's the form the ship took, and he looks like himself. Okay, that just brings some questions into mind. Well, we might very soon be getting some answers, as, uh, yes, I'm fairly certain the next place we are going is in fact Gallifrey. Wait, what? Like before you meet him or after you meet him? I think both. Oh, fine. That'll be interesting. Oh boy. And that's where we're gonna call it for now. We'll pick okay. it up in the next one. Okay then. Wow. Yeah. So, oh, boy. Is the, the story, the intrigue starts to ramp up. In time and space, we'll pick it up there next time, dear listener, on Tim Portalers. Thanks for checking out our show. If you want to learn more about us, follow us at Tim Portalers on Twitter, or you can email us directly at tim.portalers at gmail.com.